right guys so I promised you in my bug out bag video that I would do an individual review of my bug out bag fire kit so if you haven't seen my bug out bag video make sure you go check that out but right now we're just gonna go over the fire kit uh, first I want to go over the pouch this is a condor rip away medical pouch the smaller version and I do use one of these for the first aid kit in my bug out bag but um, it's such a good pouch that I also use it for my fire kit. Just a little bit about that. It has this molly panel on the back. And so you can strap it to your backpack or any other molly gear you have. But the way it works is it has this strap here that you undo. So if you have this on the outside of a backpack or something like that and you need quick access to it, all you have to do is grab it and it rips away right off of this velcro panel here so that way you can have it securely attached to your backpack but it's not so permanently attached that you'll have to undo all the molly to get to it and just rip it away so if you look on the outside of the pouch it does have a velcro panel on the front that you can put a patch on it also has molly webbing on the front so you can attach another smaller pouch to the front of it if you needed to also replace the zippers with some uh, camo paracord and also wrap paracord around the handle you know that's mainly for looks but it also gives you another source of cordage if you need it and on the inside it has elastic straps on this side that you can put anything you want into it also has a pocket down here in the back and it has another strap on this side a little bit larger to secure a little bit larger items and on this side I keep a smaller fire kit it's kind of its own compact fire kit by itself so if for some reason I needed to get rid of my whole backpack fire kit and everything this is small enough that I could just throw it in a pocket and keep going now inside of this in the top here I just have a nice bundle of twine for a fire starter also have a couple packs of wet fire fire starter a small piece of fat lighter wood a ferrocene rod and striker a small big lighter also have a tube of waterproof matches have two cotton balls shoved in the top for more tender and just a whole bunch of waterproof matches down on the inside now on the other side here I have one emergency candle uh, these are supposed to burn for a really long time now this thing here is really cool you can get these from Walmart and what this is is a fire puck uh, the way this works you take this plastic off the outside and it has a striker on the inside and you strike the top of this thing and essentially it burns like a flare and it'll burn really really hot for about five minutes and what that's good for is if you need to get a fire started um, and maybe all you have is wet wood to work with this thing burns so hot that it'll give you a better chance of getting that fire started even with wet wood right here I just have a small camera film tube and this has about 10 cotton balls in it soaked in Vaseline uh, just another source of tinder next in this uh, green tube this is also watertight in the top here I keep a, a small piece off of a fire starting brick and a bunch of small pieces of fat lighter wood over here on the side I have just another full size big lighter and over here on the other side I keep a small backup knife um, that can be used for making small wood shavings um, if you need that as an additional source to get a fire started and in this back pocket here I have an extra fuel cube for my Esbit stove now I can use this as a backup for the stove or I can just use it as a, another fire starter a regular pack of matches now that's it for this kit. Uh, now I'm going to go outside and demonstrate a few of these fire starting methods for you. 
All right, guys, now we're going to try out some of these fire starting techniques. The first thing I want to try is the wet fire. Just going to shave off a little bit of it there. Uh, see if we can get that thing to take a spark. Get off some of that black coating on there. And then it's obviously not getting it, so let's try getting a little bit more shavings in there. See if that helps any. There we go. Now that's burning pretty good. Let's get a little bit of tinder on there. Now while that's going, um, I want to try one of these little Esbit cubes. Now I think this is pretty much the same kind of thing. Let's see if I can, all right. Let's see if we can get that one to take a spark. And let's try the same thing we did with the other and uh, maybe shave off a little bit of it. See if that helps any. Now it looks like it's wanting to start, but having a lot of trouble getting that Esbit cube to start. Let's just uh, give it a try with the old trusty big lighter. See how that does. All right, now you may not be able to see that in the camera, but that is burning now. Uh, of course, we did have to use a lighter to get it going, but it is burning now. Now, obviously, these uh, matches are going to work. Well, let's hope they are. And I'm just going to try the matches on some of this fire starter brick stuff that I have here. I'm just going to break off a little bit of that right here. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but that stuff is burning. Let's add a little something to accelerate that a little bit. Next thing I want to try is one of these um, Vaseline cotton balls. And I really want to see if this thing is going to take a spark. So what you're supposed to do is kind of fluff up the cotton ball a little bit, pull the fibers apart. And let's see if that cotton ball is going to catch a spark. Oh, and there it goes. Well, that was actually the easiest one so far. Uh, the Vaseline soaked cotton ball actually caught up the fastest. Now the last one I want to try is just this twine. Um, this is supposed to be a pretty good accelerant, but what you but you, what you have to do is pull all those fibers apart, get them separated so it's not so dense. Maybe even use your knife to kind of rough it up. And get it kind of like this here. Um, now I know I can get that going with a lighter, but I want to try that with a ferrocene rod also. Wow. Yeah, that, that twine caught up fast, but it's also burning up pretty fast. So you, you definitely want to have something, something handy close by. To 
get your fire started once that twine catches. Now as you can see all of these worked pretty good. Some work better than others. But obviously you can use any of these to help you get a fire started. Hey guys, I just realized I was about to forget to show you the fire puck, and that's one of the coolest ones, so I definitely want to show you guys that. You just strike it across there, you want to hold it firmly. And that thing's going to burn really long and really hot. Now look how hot that thing's burning now. You can even hear it. Like I said, it's almost like a flare burning. It's so hot. Alright guys, now some people may say that having all this is overkill. Um, and maybe it is. But I do recommend at least having three ways to start a fire in your bag. Uh, you never know if you have to use your bug out bag or get home bag when you may have to stop somewhere for the night and uh, if it's cool outside or cold outside you're definitely going to want a way to get a fire started a way to get some food cooked I'll say you can never have too many ways to start a fire and like I said make sure you go check out my full bug out bag video I have a full rundown of everything I keep in the bug out bag in addition to my fire kit hope you all enjoyed it uh, if you have any other recommendations please put it in the comments below and we'll see you next time.